I think everybody's waiting, ready, and anxious to go on the ride, so let's get this started. So, first off, thank everyone for coming to the 55th uh, Ogemaw Hills Snowmobile Club anniversary and our 11th annual snowmobile show. Um, I'd like to everybody give a big round of applause for our entire team, our crew, our club members. Fantastic job. So this is a, it takes a village. It takes a lot more than a village. We worked all day yesterday. I mean, it, this goes, we start working on next year's event tomorrow. But uh, thank you all for coming and displaying your sleds too. Uh, we don't even have a sled count yet, but I know we're probably well over 300. So we'll get a sled count here shortly. So again, thank you all for the support and uh, great job this morning at the flag raising, the, the live uh, choir and the flag service by uh, the Blaine family was, was amazing. So, um, I'm probably gonna forget some things. Uh, oh, speaking of the flag service, I, I did really neglect to say something very important. Freedom isn't free. And we will be having a second flag ceremony during the ride. We will be doing 50 flags on some of our snowmobiles. Uh, the, the Blaine family, which is this awesome Polaris display they bring these flags, let us use them. We'll do the warm-up laps with the flags on our sleds. It's really cool. I've done it once before. It's amazing. Uh, this is our first time getting to do it here at Ogama Hills, so I'm really proud of that. Um, we had a we had a little situation overnight happen. Um, one of my very good friends and a, a strong member of the club, uh, my right-hand man when it comes to the show, Brian. Um, if you notice that his skidoo display isn't here, well, Brian's in the hospital. He had a heart. We think a heart attack. We had an event last night in the middle of the night. So say a, a prayer on his behalf. He took care of all the arrangement of the choir and the flags and all that. And uh, he's, he's uh, dearly missed. So to that end, we have, <laughs> I have, this is his get well card. Does it look like a nice one? <laughs> we found it at Hallmark. Um, It'll be up here on this table. So everybody is welcome to sign it. Just come up and sign it if you want, all right? So please come up and sign that for Brian, all right? So thank you for that. And uh, Brian, I hope you're sleeping right now and resting with all the things hooked up to you and you get better soon. So uh, the high school choir did a fantastic job. And let's move on to the memorial service. So this year we have four members that have passed in the last year. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, so, what's that? Huh, somebody say what? <laughs> so, uh, in, in order, so one of our first, uh, in fact, our co-founder, our snowmobile club was founded in 1967, December of 1967, and we are one of two clubs in Michigan that has still been in continuous service since 1967. Uh, one of our co-founders was David Huffstetler. David was 96 years old. He died in June of 2022. Uh, he was in the U.S. Navy. He was a World War II vet. He served in the Pacific Theater. A uh, tremendous man to talk and, sit and, and just carry on conversations with. If you've ever been to any of our shows, you've seen David, because this is the only show he's missed, and it's because he passed away. Um, he helped us with our 50th dedication. Uh, he always had a cane and he usually had his U.S. Uh, Navy bomber jacket on too. So tremendous gentleman, uh, lifelong member of the West Branch community. His wife, uh, he and his wife Sandy loved to travel and survived by three daughters, one son. Judy and Dean Thompson are here. Judy, I haven't seen you yet. A shout out, did you guys make it or did the weather kill you? I don't know. Has anybody seen Judy and Dean? All right, so anyways. Uh, David was, a, was an amazing man. I'll share a quick story with him. It was at one of our meetings last year, he came in, he would always come in, sit in the back, and you know, this guy helped found this club in 1967. So it's been fun for him to see how we've grown and continue the, the hobby and the sport. But he had a plaque that hung on the wall and he got done with the meeting and he came up to one of the other members and he says, can I take that plaque with me? He says, that plaque really meant a lot to me. And so he took it with him to his home and he had it hanging in his home actually when he passed away. So it was, uh, he was the outdoorsman of the year. 
Uh, it was a very prestigious award, but that plaque meant enough to him that and they had it on display at his funeral and everything. And uh, so I, I really liked that story. I thought it was really kind of powerful. So uh, David was, again, uh, a member since the day the club was founded. So I'm certain he was our longest member. So how about a, a heavenly round of applause for David Hofstetter? All One of these years, I hope we don't have any memorials. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, the second one, this lady, uh, on a personal note, my wife and I joined this club over 20 years ago, and this lady was, her and her husband were, were two of the first people to welcome us with open arms, uh, Norita Humpert. And Norita died in uh, late 2021 in December. She was a farmer from Fairgrove, Michigan. Her and her husband were decades long members of the club. They were officers of the club. If you've ever been to our warming shack, the warming shack is named in their honor. It's the Humpert's Bean Pot Warming Shack. I can't remember if it's technically named, but it's, they always, she made these huge kettles of bean soup for our firewood sessions. And great family, great people. Um, I, I like this about her, on her uh, obituary, it says that she was the real boss at the R&R &R Farms. Keith, you can appreciate that. So uh, one of her nephews is here, Keith Humpert, and uh, Keith, has been, I think, to pretty much every one of our single shows. So family still very active in snowmobiling. Uh, one of the family members, one of their sons is up racing right now at the, uh, was it Lincoln? Yeah, so uh, Norita will be missed dearly. Her, uh, her husband, Bob, passed away about a year prior to her. But one thing I really liked about Norita too, when she talked to you, she looked you right square in the eyes. She never wandered. If she was talking to you, she talked to you. And I, I, I saw a lot of value in that. But, a great lady, so a good round of applause for Norita Humphrey, please. So the next gentleman that passed, uh, Wally Daniels, was from, uh, it was a, a farmer, another very beautiful, huge farm down in Whittemore, Michigan, right on M65. So if you ever travel M65, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, Wally died in January of 2022, so just over a year ago. Um, Wally and his wife, and his son and his daughter-in-law were all officers of our club and, and dedicated probably two decades worth of service to our club through the years. Um, Chris, where's Chris at? Right here. Chris, would you like to say anything? Are you... Okay, good, come on up. This is, this is Wally's son, Chris Daniels. Chris was one of the officers of the club too, so. Thank you. Yep. Just wanted to say my father and my mother really enjoyed their time with the club. Um, and I did too in the early, late 90s, early 2000s. We've done some rides, did, did quite a bit of riding with the club. And uh, I think the biggest, biggest thing my parents got out of being involved with the club is a uh, lifetime of friendships, beyond, even beyond the snowmobile club. They would go on RV trips with other couples, uh, the Martin family, the Manners, uh, several others. and. Uh, it's just really impressive to see what this club has bloomed into. There's some dark times where things were, membership was pretty light and things were looking a little bleak and it's really nice to see that it's come full circle and it's as strong as it is here today. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So it's kind of hard to top that. Chris did share one story with me on his dad. He said his dad, when he got their first snowmobile, it was an old beater skidoo with bogey wheels, and he was riding modern with friends who all had modern sleds. So they went out for like one or two rides and realized, I need a new snowmobile. So he went out, and what did you buy, an Indy Light or a couple? Couple Indy, couple Indy Trails. Couple, couple Indy Trails from Duke the, Evans. okay, from Duke Evans downtown. So uh, I thought that was kind of a funny story, but. So, uh, yeah, big round of applause for uh, Wally Daniels, his wife, his son, and daughter-in-law for their dedication to the club. Jan? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see you, Jan. So Jan, his wife is still here. Jan, would you like to say something? I apologize. All right, thank you. Thank you for your service, too, to the club. So, appreciate it very much. Uh, the next member would be Chuck Alch. Chuck, to those of us in this crazy addiction we call vintage snowmobiles, everyone would know Chuck Alch. He was known as Mr. Skidoo. He was a member of our club. 
I uh, had been a member for several years. He helped us with our 50th snowmobile that's inside the clubhouse. In fact, that motor came from him and several of the other parts came from him, he donated. Uh, Chuck was 80 years old, passed away in May of 2022. And uh, it was for us, when I say us, my wife and, my, uh, and I, my best friend Brian, his wife Pam, we kind of all did a circuit together with Chuck, traveled all over, did quite a few shows with him. And, uh, Brian and him were inseparable, but he was Mr. Skidoo. He always had a pipe and he had his Stormy Cromer red hat on. They were usually parked right out there. So Chuck uh, left us in May of 2022 and left a huge void in the hobby. And there's actually a really nice display inside uh, the clubhouse if you haven't seen it yet uh, in Chuck's honor. And uh, every show that I think I've been to this winter, which has been several, there's been some form of memorial for Chuck. He's touched a lot of people's lives. Uh, he grew up in the Harrison area, was an engineer at uh, uh, Oldsmobile in Lansing, and uh, everybody knew him as Mr. Skidoo. So uh, Chuck is uh, survived by his son, Kurt, and many, many close friends in the hobby. So uh, about a big heavenly round of applause for, for Chuck, Mr. Skidoo Alt, Mr. Chuck. All right, so the last uh, club member that has passed uh, this, within the last year was Ray Crone. Uh, Ray was from Bad Axe, Michigan. He was a member for several years and uh, he was a truck driver, loved the outdoors. When you looked at his list of clubs that he belonged to, it was amazing how he, he literally was in all sorts of different clubs, outdoors clubs, hunting clubs. Uh, he loved racing of all forms, NASCAR, local dirt track, etc. Anything with a motor, they said he was, he could drive it and drive it very well. Um, Ray died at, at, at way too young. He was only 64 years of age in March of 2021. And he was survived by his wife, Lori. Uh, They've been married for 46 years. Um, a son, a daughter, and several grandkids. I don't believe any of the family is here. Is any of the Crone family here? I do not think so, but... Um, Ray had been a member for a bunch of years and being uh, a truck driver and also tied to farming, he was also very mechanical and uh, we will miss Ray. So a big round of applause for Ray Crone. All right, so thankfully that's our last of our memorials. And uh, so next on our agenda, last year's, this is a cool story, I love this. Last year, uh, our, our snow wheel that we raffled off was won by a gentleman from down in Leonard, I think it is. Where are you at, Dave? Okay, so come on up, the family, come on up. So I texted him from here, because you can't make a phone call, and he's like, oh my gosh, yes, I want the snow wheel. So I'll share a quick story on, on this. This is how, It just keeps getting better. You can't make this stuff up. I'll be kind. Um, so anyways, he said, yes, I, he says, I can't believe we won. He says, earlier that day, his grandson, Dean, called his grandma and grandpa. So we hadn't even drawn yet, okay? Early that, that day. Dean calls grandpa and grandma and says, hey, can we ride up with you to go pick up the snowmobile? We're gonna win it. <laughs> so when I text Dean, or I'm sorry, Dave, and I said, hey, you won, do you want the snowmobile or do you want the $500 cash? You can imagine what his, re his reaction with four little grandkids, what his reaction was. He didn't want the cash, did he, kids? So they came up the next day, and his wife, Cindy, and, and Dean, I think one of the other ones was with him too. Yep, and they literally let him ride around the parking lot, and so they're here this year, and they get to draw the winning sled ticket for next year, for this year, right now, 2023. So, and they all got to go on some pretty cool rides today. They rode some of the old sleds, and I think a 66 Arctic Cat and a 65 Arctic Cat, maybe. I don't remember, but they've had a great time. So, yeah. Do you want to say anything? No, I'm good. Okay, I'm all right. All right. Nope, all right, that's fine. Let her draw the sled and him the okay, so is our 50-50 ready to be drawn? Chris, can you find out? And then we'll do the raffles on the, on the sled. So, and don't forget, you know, we do have this fantastic caramel corn and kettle corn, so please uh, give them your business. 
I'll give you another really cool story. This one's just in the works right now. Probably two months ago, a friend of mine from Michigan slash Florida, he, he got kind of wussy on us. He moved to Florida. I'm talking about you, Dana. <laughs> he called me and he says, hey, hey, um, everything on for the show? I said, yep. He says, weather's not looking good. Said, hey, we'll have snow. Just say a prayer. So anyways, long story short, this is, I like this story because his daughter and son and then their kids live in Georgia. They've never done anything in the snow ever in their entire lives. Dana grew up as a, a championship racer here in Michigan Circuit and his parents owned an Oldsmobile dealership. And he was really active in the club, helped build that first warming hut and building down at the south end. Well, so long story short, his his extended family are all here now, and, and they've been uh, skiing, snowboarding, I think they went tubing, sledding, and skating. And they, they've never seen snow in their lives. Skating, sledding, snowboarding. So I think it's really kind of a cool story. And today they're actually going on rides. There's a couple of us that are letting them use some sleds, and they're going to go on the ride with us. So, yes, so Dana Wiltsey from Standish. So, all right, is this the snowmobile? So they're still counting 50-50. So I'm going to do one other thing first. I'll give you a minute. All right. Our sled count is in. And we had, that's what the secret squirrel note was. Um, we had 110 new sleds on the ground. And we had 228 old sleds on the ground. So I think we did fantastic. How about a big round of applause? Thank you all. As the crowd went wild. So uh, right now, every year, Part of our money that we raise here, we donate to keep the, support, the sport going. Um, so we'll get to you guys in a minute. Greg Bush, can you come up? Bernie, you're ASCLA, and Ben. Yeah, please. Yeah. So these three gentlemen represent, we're all in this hobby together. We all have the same sickness. Um, Greg is with? Yeah. Bernie's got Arctic cats. He and I really get along great. So this is Ben. <laughs> Greg's got a, a very diverse sickness. He collects all sorts of oddballs. But uh, Greg's with the Top of the Lake Museum, and Bernie's with the Top of the Lake Museum. Greg is also, we're all with the Antique Snowboard Club of America. And then Ben runs one of those other really good shows here in the state, Alpina Show. So every year we pick uh, different groups. We always donate to the museum, we always donate to the Antique Snowboard Club. And then this year Ben's show got the donation for the the other donations. So what I'd like to do now is uh, make presentations to them. The checks are not ripped, just the envelope. <laughs> so uh, there is, where'd Jen go? Jen was supposed to be up here too. Oh, come on up here, Jen. Come on, Jen. I didn't forget about you, but I did. Yes. Yeah. Jen is the treasurer for the Antique Snowmobile Club of America. So I will give Jen the check. So it goes to the right place. Here's a check for the Antique Snowmobile Club of America from Ogma Hills for $400. Thank you. And here's a check for $400 for the Top of the Lake Museum from the Ogma Hills Snowmobile Club. And here's a check then for $100 for the Alpena Trail Roamers. They always do a benefit for a local community person. Yeah. I don't know who's going to take pictures. Anybody? Gary, you got it going. Oh, Grange? Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Yep. And so next, all right, so these are two of our board members, our trail coordinator and our trust treasurer. So go ahead, Russ, it's yours. Okay, on a 50-50, we had a total of $995. So I bought another $5 worth of making an even thousand. So the winner's gonna win 500 bucks. Hey, Russ. All right, and what was your name again, young man? Jacob. This is Jacob from the last year's winning crew. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And reach in and draw one. All right. 
All right, so the winning number is, you're going to read it with me. Um, one, one, five, one, one, two. Oh. One, one, five, one, one, two. It's a green ticket. One, one, oh my gosh, Matt Vandybosch. All right, Matt Vandybosch. Goes by Indy Do. One, one, five, one, one, two. Awesome. Yeah, I'll get you the money later, but. <laughs> Jackson the mail. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, look this way. Come here for a minute. Go. Yep. So he said there's a motor back there he wants to buy. He just got some cash. So whoever's got it for sale, put the price up a little. Just saying. Well, congrats. Thanks, thanks everyone for the support on the 50-50. That's amazing. All right, so now the raffle drawing for the snowmobile. It's sitting over there. It's a 1999 Skidoo uh, 120 MXZ Mini Kid Sled. And which one of you is drawing it? And what was your name again, sweetie? Oh, yeah. Evelyn. So part of the winning crew from last year, Evelyn gets to draw. So Evelyn, go up one ticket. Don't close your eyes, OK? Digging deep. Digging deep. These things have been shaken up and separated and just for the last day. There you go. All right, so can you guys read that? Elise. Elise. Uh, Be Lil. Be Lil. Elise B. Lil from Birch Run, Michigan. You don't have to be present to win, but is Elise B. Lil here? Okay, do you know who she is? She's your sister? No way. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. So, all right, well. That is fantastic. Can you come up here and we'll get a picture with you guys? Stay here while we get these pictures. Here, hold the winning ticket for your sister. There you go. All right, then look over here too. All right, so that takes care of the drawings and stuff. I need that back, buddy, but we'll, we'll get it to your, your sister, okay? All right, how old is your sister? Huh? She's four. She's a four-year-old raffle winner. I love it. That's amazing. All right, so thank you guys. Yes, thank you. All right, so next on the list is the driver's meeting for the ride.